Tonight, the FBI's new face recognition system. Lyft comes to the Big Apple. And where is the Internet of Things that we all dream about? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 124 for Tuesday, July 8th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up for Personal Capital, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. Let's get right to the tech feed. The FBI has developed its own facial recognition system and plans to have it fully deployed throughout all 50 states by the end of the year. Though it still needs to work in the facial intelligence department. Humans can recognize faces about 70-97% of the time. And according to the Electronic Frontier Foundation, the FBI system is currently capable of 85% accuracy. With that accuracy, while that accuracy pales in comparison to Facebook's facial recognition system, which is nearly as accurate as a human, Facebook's advantage comes mainly from their access to far more images and data, with more than 250 billion photos to the FBI's 50 million. The FBI hopes to make their system permissible in court as they build up a database of photos, eventually surpassing human accuracy. What worries some privacy experts is the legal battle currently playing out between Facebook and prosecutors over the rights of law enforcement to collect information from social media agencies. This could lead to law enforcement having instant access to Facebook's photo cache for their facial recognition system, as well as being able to build links between suspects and social media acquaintances. Lyft and their pink mustaches are coming to New York City. Starting this Friday and targeting the traditionally underserved boroughs of Brooklyn and Queens, riders can use the app to hail private cars driven by regular people, not taxis or limousine drivers. Lyft operates in over 60 U.S. cities and plans to have more than 500 drivers available when the service starts up in New York. Uber, a competitor, has operated in New York for years, yet unlike Uber, Lyft cannot summon rides from Manhattan. The battle over getting a ride in New York is tightening up. Now, just how tough is the rumored Sapphire screen on the possible new iPhone 6? Well, YouTuber Marques Brownlee says he acquired a front panel of the 4.7-inch phone, and in a video posted onto his channel, he tries to scratch it with a knife and keys. He also bends it with his hands and compresses it under his shoe. It does not appear that the screen was scratched or broken. Tough, indeed. Persistent speculation has pointed to a new iPhone release this September, though there is no way to confirm if the screen is actually made of sapphire. In the ongoing dispute with Hachette over e-book terms, Amazon is now appealing directly to authors. According to the New York Times, the company sent letters to a small group of Hachette writers, offering to take them out of the middle with 100% of the sales price of every Hashit book sold. Roxana Robinson, president of the Authors Guild, said that this move is, in effect, asking authors to take sides against their publishers. Amazon has also offered to stop the shipping delays and price adjustments it enacted at the start of this dispute with Hashit. Coming up, a microphone that count a microwave that counts calories for you. And next, Sarah Silbert from Engadget is here to talk about what is happening with the Internet of Things. But first, today I want to share with you a free and secure tool called Personal Capital that solves two barriers to growing your personal wealth. The first barrier is that it's hard to keep track of stocks, 401ks, bank accounts, etc., all on different sites with different usernames and passwords. The second is that you pay someone to manage it, and you're probably paying too much. Personal Capital brings all your accounts and assets together on one single screen, on your computer, phone, or tablet, with real-time and intuitive graphs. This week, Personal Capital announced the integration of its award-winning app with Android Wear, available for download in Google Play. The Watch app seamlessly integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and provides users with relevant and timely updates on their finances wherever and whenever they need it. It shows you how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. You'll also get tailored advice on optimizing your investments. So why wait? Signing up just takes a minute, and it'll pay big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right away. To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com tn2. 
Personal Capital is free and the smart way to grow your money. You must go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. That's personalcapital.com slash TN2. And we thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us tonight is Sarah Silbert, Senior Editor of Engadget. Thank you very much for coming on. Of course. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, you wrote today's article, Intel and Samsung Join Forces to Streamline Connectivity for the Internet of Things. So what exactly are they developing? Right. So as you know, the Internet of Things is just becoming more and more complicated as more devices are being connected. There are all these different protocols, standards, um, ways that technology are being used for devices to get connected. So what these companies are doing is trying to make a spec, a standard, so that no matter what product, what platform, what operating system, they'll be able to communicate seamlessly. Right. And it's not just Intel or Samsung, right? I mean, can you tell us what companies are involved? No, it's Intel, Samsung, Dell, um, Broadcom, um, Atmel, se several big companies. So um, obviously some heavyweights behind this um, with a lot of resources to help make this happen. Well, now considering the companies that are, are involved, what type of products or area do you think they're going to focus on? Home, car, office? All of the above. Um, and they're really going to start actually with home. I mean, there are so many connected smart devices in the home. And in addition to that, they're going to be for focusing a lot on security as it relates to the enterprise. So things related to the office and securely getting online and sharing files in a protected environment. Now the internet, then they'll move on. Yeah, of course, they'll have to move on. But I mean, yeah. the Internet of Things has been around for a while. And this is not the only group trying to come out with a standard for everyone else to use, right? No, not at all. And that's the ironic thing that we're trying to create a standard. But yet again, there's another group already. Um, it's called the All Seen Alliance. And it has some pretty big names behind it as well. Um, it has Qualcomm. It has um, several other. It has LG, I believe, and Sharp. So they're working on their own thing using Qualcomm's technology. And then we have kind of a competing standard. So definitely some irony there. Yeah, when everyone has a standard, then it's not a standard. Now, is, yeah. is, is there any time frame on when this will be implemented or when we'll start to see a rollout? No, it's, it's not very clear. And obviously, this is a complicated process, so don't expect to see it in the next month or two. Um, they're going to have a certification program along with this. So I think when it does come out, when it is completed, we might see on packages um, sort of certification, a sticker or something, so you know that the device complies. Um, but definitely not anytime um, in the immediate future. Now, I think the most important question of all, are they working on a better name than Internet of Things or IoT? Because that name is really played out. I agree with you, but I mean, judging by this consortium's name, the Open Interconnect Consortium, I don't think their focus is terminology, unfortunately. So still the Internet of Things for now. They're going to need to get a marketing professional in there and tell them, hey, boys, it, it, it's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. Well, thanks, Sarah Silbert, Senior Editor at Engadget. Can you tell the folks where they can find you? They can find me on Twitter at, at Sarah Silbert. Sarah, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And finally, foodies and health nuts rejoice. No more calorie counting for you. Instead, let your microwave do it. That's the idea that the research and development team at GE came up with. They developed a prototype microwave that directly measures the calories of the food that it heats. A low energy microwave passes through the fat and water content of the food. Then the system calculates the calories. Currently, it only works with foods mixed together. But a new gadget is in the works that will be able to determine the stats for a full plate of food, say a chicken and two vegetables, and some rice, and a slice of pizza, and steak, and a donut, and cake. Yeah, cake. Anyways, all this information can be sent to your smartphone while you wait. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2, and write us at tn2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Father Robert Balasser. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.